If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain Is a place for people like you If you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light Give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you streets are made of gold And when you get there There's a hand to hold I believe When your day's down here or through There's a place up there For people like you If you walk around with your heart on your sleeve Trying to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for love So someone could be saved There's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold to hold I believe when your 
If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you If you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light Give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you streets are made of gold And when you get there There's a hand to hold I believe When your days down here are through There's a place up there For people like you If you walk around with your heart on your sleeve Trying to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for love So someone could be saved There's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold to hold I believe when your days down here or through there's a place up there for people like you
keep doing what you do Cause there's a place up there for people like you If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you If you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light Give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you Streets are made of gold And when you get there There's a hand to hold I believe When your day's down here or through There's a place up there For people like you If you walk around with your heart on your sleeve Trying to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for love So someone could be saved There's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold to hold I believe when your days down here or through there's a place out there for people like you If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you If you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light Give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place 
for people like you. I've heard up there the streets are made of gold. And when you get there, there's a hand to hold. I believe when your days down here are through, there's a place up there for people like you. If you walk around with your heart on your sleeve And if you're trying to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for love so someone could be saved There's a place for people like you are made of gold And when you get there There's a hand to hold I believe When your days down here are through There's a place Up there For people like you If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you if you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light, give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you streets are made of gold And when you get there There's a hand to hold I believe When your days down here are through There's a place up there For people like you If you walk around with your heart on your sleeve Trying to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for love So someone could be saved There's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold to hold I believe when you take 
ways down here or through There's a place out there for people like you If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you If you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light Give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you Streets are made of gold And when you get there There's a hand to hold I believe When your days down here or through There's a place up there For people like you If you walk around with your heart on your sleeve Trying to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for love So someone could be saved There's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold to hold I believe when your days down here or through there's a place out there for people like you Keep doing what you do Cause 
there's a place up there for people like you. If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you If you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light, give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for attending today's service. You'll notice that there is a mic down on the lower half of the stage. That is for any guests who are giving tributes. We'd ask that you please speak directly into the mic. You can take your mask down while you're speaking. And as service is about to get, begin, may I ask that you please stand. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we thank you. We give you praise and glory another time. As we are gathered here, Lord God, in the midst of your people, we ask that you bless our hearts. Lord God, we pray for comfort even during this time as we get ready, Father, to lay your son to rest. Chandy Richardson, God, you already know him by name. Help us, Lord God, to uh, remember, amen, all the things, hallelujah, of greatness, of, of who he is, Lord God. Help us, Father God, to even endure such a time as now. God, we are thankful things you do well hallelujah give us this day father god our daily bread be our strength be our shield be our buckler be everything father god that we need you to be right now and we give you the glory we give you the praise and the honor that is due to your name let the church say amen amen you may be seated let me take this time just to welcome each one of you uh, to this homegoing service uh, for Chandy Richardson, I've, amen, um, gotten to know him through reading uh, all that was written about him and through talking to uh, a couple people um, about him, and I'm, I'm thankful to stand in front of you. My name is Bishop Jermaine McLaughlin, coming to you from Power in Praises Deliverance Ministries, um, and it's an honor for me to be here. The setting is uh, uniquely different during such a time as this. Um, but we are thankful to every one of you who have made it here uh, this morning. Amen. And to everyone that is watching us online, we, we welcome you and we honor each one of you. Your presence makes a difference at this time. Hallelujah. We give God all the praise. The family, let me tell you to uh, strengthen your hearts. Amen. It will be well and it is well. Hallelujah. And we give God thanks. Amen. For, for you, for being here. And we trust and know that the Lord will help you, amen, to carry you through the rest of uh, the days to come, all right? Without further delays, we're going to go right into our programs, amen, and we're going to invite uh, Priscilla Adu to do the hymn of Amazing Grace. Priscilla here? Oh. Hello, my name is Priscilla Addo. I am a friend of Shandy's. He was my daughter, Serenity's godfather. She's now two years old. We are really going to miss him. He was such a great spirit, had such an amazing heart, was so loving and so giving. And at this time, I'd like to dedicate this song to him as we continue to keep his family and all his friends in our prayers as we breathe through this time, as well as celebrate all the good times and celebrate his life, which is what he would want. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that a wretch like me I once was lost 
Priscilla Adu for such a great rendition of Amazing Grace, um, beautifully, beautifully sung. Uh, at this time, I'm going to invite uh, the mother, amen, of uh, Mr. Richardson. Please, will you just welcome her, uh, Violet, as she comes. We're going to be reading. The scripture is found in your booklets. Reading is taken from first, first Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 14 to 18. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another, with these words. Thanks for the... Thank you so much. I know that as a mother, it is difficult um, to, to bury your own son. And from what I come to understand, this is your only son. Um, so I know that it's a, a great loss, but all is not lost. There's still hope in the Lord. Uh, to strengthen you and to help you carry on. And I, I encourage you, you you're, you're a superbly strong woman um, and a woman of God, a lady. You, you, are, you are definitely dealing with this um, in, in a wonderful way. I, I don't know the last time I've done a funeral and the parents uh, actually took part. Um, and I commend you for, for your strength. Continue to share it through the rest of your family, I'm sure. Uh, everyone else will be looking to you um, for, for some of your strength that you have during this time. All right, God bless you. Uh, every time I do a funeral, I, I always try to look, and I, I know that this is not a, a, a Jamaican uh, crowd, um, but I always try to read in the, in the um, program, you know, or during the eulogy, what 
are the nicknames uh, because uh, they're they're interesting to me. You know, if if you come from Jamaica, they'll you you know people have their first name, their real name, and then they've got some name. God knows where this name came from, but somebody named uh, this child a name and. And then I was going through Mr. Richardson's program here, and I said, Chuka fish? Is that it? Is that how you pronounce it? Chuka fish. And I'm trying to think to myself, how on earth did, he, did they get a name? Did he love fish or something? Like, how, how did that happen? When he was a baby, he always asked my mom for tuna fish. Oh. Say tuna fish. <laughs> Chuka fish. Oh my goodness, all right, now it makes sense now. All right, thank you, thank you. Chuka fish, well, or chuka. All right, I, I'll, I'll remember that one. I've heard some very interesting names that people have come up with. We're gonna have a song sung now, uh, It Is Well With My Stro Soul, an instrumental by Cousin Ade. Please welcome him. He's playing on the video, all right. The trumpet shall sound, and the Lord shall descend, even though it is well with my soul. All right. God bless you, Mama. With my soul, with my soul, it is well. It is well, it is well with my soul. Amen, amen. You sang that one out. You are a, such a strong woman of God. God bless you. 
Amen. Amen. Uh, we are having scripture reading by Aunt May. Good morning, everyone. Before I read the scripture reading, I would just like to say a few words from my heart for my nephew and his mom and his girlfriend, my son. Do empty hearts get filled again? Does sadness turn to joy? Does anger melt in light's pure love, if faith will employ? Does pain turn into victory? Does struggle turn to gain? We will see the sun again, though living in the rain. I do believe that if we pray and let him hold us near, that soon our hearts would bloom again, his love will dry each tear. Just a few more words. In loving memory of my nephew, Shandy Richardson, Shandy's love was unsaid, but was felt, especially when he greets you with that welcome and goodbye hug, with that little smirky smile, with the head turned on the side. Shandy, I remembered yesterday when you was here with me. A part of me believed that that was the way it would always be. But the master had another plan for you. My mind still cannot accept that day when I was told you passed away. I does, it does not matter how long ago it was. To me, it would always seem like only yesterday. Shandy, I love you and always will miss you. May your soul rest in peace eternally. Your loving auntie, May. I will now read the Psalm 121. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help, my help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy, thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even evermore. Let's read another word. Thank you, Aunt May. Uh, we're going to have some tributes right now done through video. And uh, Father Mervyn Richardson uh, will be coming to us right now. Yes, today, I never knew I would have to be doing this for one of my children. That is paying my last respects to my firstborn son, Shondi Richardson. Shondi was a very loving child. I remember him now visiting me in New York during his school vacations while he was in Canada. I remember him visiting me when I lived in Anguilla, when he would come by to see me and visit my parents as well, and his uncles and aunts. Shondi was a very loving and gentle giant. I could hear the call now I got from Shirley Friday morning, the 22nd of January. He told me Shandy was taken to the hospital. I just had a funny feeling that the end was near. I had just buried my mom in 2020 in September. Never knew that I would be doing the same thing to my firstborn son. 
so soon. Like we say back home, children are supposed to bury parents. Parents are not supposed to bury children. But guess what? God knows best. And so, Sean B., as you go, I just want to tell you, go in peace. May you sleep on, surely. May you hold on to God in this time of bereavement. I can't imagine how difficult it must be for you. So on behalf of myself, children, Shondi's siblings, my brothers and sisters, friends, we just want to say, may you sleep on Shondi. Go in peace. We'll see you on the other side. Shandi, you're gone too soon. Love you, and I'll see you on the other side. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Richardson. Uh, and coming to us right now is Uncle Chris Richardson. As the day pants after the water broke, so pant our souls after you, O God. We thirst for you even during this moment of pain and agony as we suffer the loss of a son, of a grandson, of a nephew, Shawnee Richardson. I am Chris Richardson, his paternal uncle, and on behalf of his other paternal uncle, aunts, Lester Richardson, Grace and Ivor, his many cousins, uncles, aunt-in-law, particular Sandra Richardson, we express deepest condolences at this particular time. We will not, it will be remiss of me if I would not mention his grandfather, Mervyn Morgan Richardson Jr. They both shared a very fond relationship. Over the last six months, we have been struck by two deaths, our mother and now our very precious nephew. But God is in control. And even though our hearts are broken at this time, we are resolute in God that he would see us through these tough and trying times. Shawnee, you may not hear me at this time, but we love you. Your warm embrace, your gentle words, your hugs spoke volumes. We love you. And we say to Shirley, take courage and to Mervyn, my brother, Stay with God. God bless you as we mourn together. Amen. Thank you, Uncle Chris. And coming to us is Brother Kadeem Richardson. The pain of losing my brother, my older brother, Shandi, is difficult to put into words. It started with incredible shock. As I heard the words from dad when I concernedly asked what the update was with Shandi. After receiving the news earlier that day, that Friday morning actually, that he was ill and heading to the hospital. I just left my hospital as a matter of fact and was heading home from a long day. When dad said the words, he's gone. Though English, it might as well have been in any other language that I did not know because my brain just could not understand it. There was an error message. So I asked for clarification. I said, what do you mean he's gone? And then he said he died. A heavy warmth came over me until my feet fell numb and I had to pull over and get off the phone. The tears began to flow in ways that I could not imagine. And my heart began to break. The permanence of such sudden and tragic loss began to set in as my mind was flooded with all our memories. I remember 
idolizing him as a boy because who doesn't idolize their older brother? But I remember most our adult relationship. I remember the trips to Toronto and New York to visit each other and the pure joy and admiration we showed. Hours spent talking and laughing, catching up on the latest in our lives. I'm gonna miss the advice. I'm gonna miss his, his chuckle. I'm gonna miss the biggest hugs uh, that you can ever imagine when we first met. But most of all, I'm gonna miss my big brother, Shandi Kareem Richardson. Rest easy, my brother, rest easy. Thank you, uh, Brother Kadeem. And coming to us is uh, Latoya Walsh on behalf of the family. Shandi grew up in the Valley of Anguilla with his grandparents, Oliver, Daddy, and Granny Mama, with his first cousins, Kwame, Kimba, Jamal, myself, Johanny. Fauna and Buster would soon join them during Christmas and summer holidays. They grew up watching wrestling, of course, and baseball with Daddy, and called themselves the tag team. He was also cousin to everyone who lived in Florence, Chrissy, and Rika Yard. They wrestled, played cricket, soccer, and baseball together, walked from school and church together, and trolled the neighborhoods for whatever fruits were in season. To this boisterous and happy group of boys and Kimba, he was affectionately known as Chuka or Chuka Fish. He was not Anguillian by birth, but was definitely Anguillian by heart. Anguilla was in his bones. To him, no place on earth could compare. Sadly, he did not realize his dream of having an Anguilla passport. Shandi started his education early at Stony Ground and Valley Primary School before migrating to Canada where he, where he completed his schooling. He took a break in 2002 and joined Jamal in Ohio, but soon returned to Canada. In winter 2007, Running from the chill of Canada, he moved to St. Thomas, the land of his birth, where he bonded with his little cousin, Ade. It was in St. Thomas that he was introduced to construction and realized that he loved the creative design aspect of the trade. He stayed just long enough to learn the basics before moving to Anguilla in 2009 to be with his precious mama, who was by that time ailing. As a young adult, Shani now trolled the entire valley and Sigasis with his cousins Latif and Shaka and Crocus Bay and Rogers Hill to catch fish and wild goats with Jamal, Troy, and Shaggy. He was in his element, living the outdoors life. Realizing that youth only lingered for a while, in 2010, he would return to Canada, not with a perfect path, but with a perfect plan to choose a career and work hard at it. Either he picked designing or building pools, or it had picked him, but he truly enjoyed the work and advanced quickly in his craft. For him, this was a path that satisfied, a path he pursued until his much too early sudden departure. Shawnee exemplified what it meant to be family. He was passionate about those who shared his bloodline and neighborhood. He had the enormous capacity to give of himself and believed it was his duty bound to give a hand up to all of his playmates he left in Anguilla who might still be struggling. For him, it was truly no friend left behind. You often wondered how he got all those things packed when he traveled, but there was some, something for everyone. Shawnee was the Richardson family bridge. He was loved and respected by his grandparents, his aunts and uncles, and practically idolized by his first cousin's children, especially Shokoi and Diani. He felt personally responsible for his uncle Saya and insisted that he spend summers in Canada so that he could keep an eye on him. 
although he did not spend a lot of time with his paternal grandparents, aunts, uncles, and their families, he loved them with the same passion that he had for the Valley family. He would beam whenever he spoke of his grandmother Enid, Miss Rich, or Aunt Grace, and was truly heartbroken when he could not attend his grandmother's homecoming. Shawnee has now crossed the stream, and we can all imagine his signature laughing, his signature laugh and crying at the same time as he is welcomed by Daddy, Mama, Enid, and Kwame to the great beyond. His work here is done. He did not leave behind a big fancy house, a fancy car, or a huge bank account, but he did leave behind a legacy of love and caring, and he has left those who will be missed who will miss him and cherish his memories much better than he met them. May God reward his efforts and may he, may he rest in perpetual peace. His Valerie Richardson family. All right, I didn't hear one thing she said. All I heard was catch fish, but I'm sure um, it was very nice. Thank you, uh, LaTroya. Uh, coming to us right now is uh, uh, Waymaker, singing Waymaker, cousin Kiamba Connor and son Chakoy B. <laughs> Tears, 
You mend the broken heart You're the answer to it all Jesus You wipe away all tears You mend the broken heart You're the answer to it all To it all Jesus ah, We make a miracle worker Promise keeper Light in the darkness My God That is who you are Hey We make a miracle worker Promise keeper Light in the darkness My God That is who you are You are here Touching every life I worship you I worship you You are here Meeting every need I worship you I worship you We love you We miss you Rest in peace I love you I'm gonna miss you And I'm never gonna forget you, Shani Thank you for being there in my life From your cousin, Shakoi Thank you Um, son and a cousin, a beautiful rendition of Waymaker. God bless you. And now we are going to have the eulogy uh, being read by Glenda Bruni. Shandi joined our family at the age of 10. So before I deliver the eulogy, we've actually written a letter from our family to Shandi. Dear Shandi, thank you for being a member of our family for 28 years and counting. You hold a special place in our hearts that will never be filled by anyone else. You loved your brother Daniel and your god sister Leah completely. For that, we will be eternally grateful. We know that you're listening from above when we say, with sorrow in our hearts, that we will forever miss you and remember your kind and caring heart and soul. That precious smile on your handsome face will be permanently etched in our memories as we smile back at you reminiscently. Memories, memories of our past 28 years together include you and Daniel rolling around and jumping on Grandma Olive's bed until you broke it. And the laughter that followed. You were about 16 and Daniel was eight. You playing horsey and chase and catch with your god sister Aaliyah you had her laughing from your belly, from her belly. You were so good with her. She's now 15. Christmas dinners, birthday celebrations, family visits, all those memorable events our families have shared together over the past 40 plus years, if we have to count, <laughs> include when we first met mom, over 40 years. 
we will forever cherish you as we hold these sweet memories and many, many more in our hearts. Grandson, son, brother, godbrother, may your rest be perfectly serene. May eternal light shine on you. We love you dearly. Grandma Olive, Glenda, Daniel Glenn, and my little Aaliyah. From Anna. One or the other must leave. One or the other must stay. One or the other must grieve. That is forever the way. That is the vow that was sworn faithful till death do us part. Brave in what has to be born, widening the ache in the heart. One, howsoever adored, first must be summoned away. That is the will of the Lord, one or the other must stay. Since the day we met almost 10 years ago, we built so many memories together. And you showed me what a kind, loving, gentle giant you could be. It is in these memories that it is these it, it sorry it is these memories that will get us through these times shandy loved sports especially his toronto blue jays and raptors i remember going to see the larry o'brien trophy in toronto and shandy saying to the trophy we will see you in june Lo and behold, one of Shandy's greatest dreams came true when the Raptors won the championship that year. And he was able to go to the championship parade, all dressed up in his Raptors gear and his brand new Raptor shoes. He was so proud and happy to be a Torontonian. There was nothing that Shandy loved more than his family and friends. He would go above and beyond for them all, whether in his work or personal life. Shandy was extremely loyal. I can attest to that. It was clear that when Shandy was in your corner, he was there, all of him was there. From his big hugs to that huge grin when he met you, that grin. You knew that you were important to him. Shandi was such a given person and could not see anyone in need without lending a hand. We will rest easy knowing that you are now wrapped in the loving arms of your mama and your daddy. Playing baseball with Kwame, basketball with your sports idol, Kobe, and hanging out with all who you have passed before, and hanging out with all who have passed before you and who you have met again. 
I was honored to know Shandi, to love him and to be loved by him. He was my friend, my king, my soulmate, my inspiration, my everything. I will hold you in my heart until I can hold you in my arms in heaven. We celebrate him, we honor him, and we will miss him. Rest easy, my love, until we meet again. Your Anna Banana forever. From mom, Auntie Shirley. Shandi, with a broken and sad heart, I write these words, I love you. I know I will never again hear that in the mornings when you wake up or at night before we go to rest. I thank God for blessing me for 38 years to see what a beautiful, loving, kind, and truly compassionate soul you had. I will never hear you sing, oh mommy, with whatever loving words you wanted to tell me in your out of tune singing, with me shouting, please stop. I will cherish those memories forever. God loves you more, and I am at peace with his decision. May you rest in everlasting peace. I love you from your Cheryl, the Pearl. Thank you so much, Glenda, for your eulogy, kind words, and the remembrance, the thoughts that you have uh, of Mr. Richardson are grateful. Amen. Um, I'm going to just take a few minutes of your time. We, we have one hour, and I'm just going to take a few minutes of your time just to encourage everyone's hearts um, during this time. I won't be too I promise you, I won't be long. <laughs> um, generally, when you hear the preacher man say, you know, give me 10 minutes, that generally means, you know, 20, 30 minutes or more. But I, won't, I will not do that to you today. All right, I'm going to uh, respect the time that is given. A simple word that comes uh, to me as I was uh, trying to meditate on how to uh, encourage you today. And a, a little subject came to my mind. Having God's strength made perfect in the time of weakness, in the time of sorrow. And I want to talk to you today a little bit about a person in the Bible. His name was Apostle Paul, who, who was an important, who, who has an important lesson that we can learn from his life about what it really means to experience God's strength even in the time of weakness, in the time of sorrow. Paul played a very significant part in not only establishing uh, the, the New Testament church, but also um, in writing. Uh, the Bible talks about him being one who was a killer of Christians. Paul's conversion story to become a follower of Christ is truly fascinating. Through, through his writing, his personal obedience and passion to God were fruitful in all ways, and many came to know Jesus Christ because of his ministry. Um, Paul, in the book of Acts, chapter 9 and 16, God says of Paul, For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. Paul's ministry would be far from easy. In his second letter to the church of Corinth, we get a small understanding of the suffering that Paul was required to endure for the sake of Christ. It says something like this, he said, uh, though if I should wish to boast, I would not be a fool, for I would be speaking the truth, but I refrain from it, so that no one may think more of me 
then he sees in me or hears from me so to keep me from being conceited because of your surpassing greatness of the revelation a thorn was given to me in the flesh a, me a mess uh, upset you to uh, must upset you or to har harass me to keep me from being conceited Paul received visions and revelations from God that he would boast, that he could have boasted about if he wanted to. However, he refused to do it because he's committed to Christ and Christ alone. It was never about himself. Paul shares that to keep himself humble, God has given him a thorn in his flesh. And we are not sure exactly what the thorn is or why Paul decides not to go into much detail about it. But I think we can all relate to having thorns in our lives, those things that continually persist, uh, are persistent in us, uh, areas of suffering and weakness, sometimes uh, feelings of being let down and let go that we wish would just go away. And Paul requests of the Lord three times to remove the suffering, uh, much like Jesus Christ did in the Garden of Gethsemane, to which God answers three times, I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in the time of weakness. Therefore, I will not boast uh, all of the more, uh, therefore, I will not boast all the more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me, he says. From the scripture, we learn a great deal about suffering, weakness, about sorrows and sadness, and the power that God has to resurrect someone. We learn from Paul's experience that God will allow our strength to be sacrificed so that we may experience true uh, greatness or a greater strength in him, Amen. That we can rest assured in him that he's the only one that can give us the strength that we need. Three reasons of God's strength that why we need to rely on him is because our strength restricts us. If we do anything in our own strength, it restricts us from experiencing God's strength in our lives. Number two, our strength limits us to only what we can do. And number three, our strength can only serve as a temptation to boast in ourselves when our purpose is found in giving God the utmost glory. In God's response to Paul, we learn two significant lessons when dealing with difficulties in life. The first is God's grace is sufficient. Paul will still be able to accomplish the purpose of, that God placed on his life despite the difficulties and the challenges that cause his weaknesses. Our weakness does not separate God's strength from us. Um, our, our weakness does not stop God's plan from operating in us. Our weaknesses, our sorrows does not stop God's grace and from loving us and from showing us his amazing ways in our lives. Number two, God's strength is made perfect in our weakness, the Bible says. The very thing that, 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 that making Paul that was making Paul weak is also the very thing that God is using to show his power through Paul's life. Our weakness is the key to God's strength in our lives. We experience God's grace and strength in the most weakest times of our life. You will never know our God to be a way maker if you've never needed a way made. You will never know our God to wipe the tears from your eyes if, you had never, if you've never had anything to cry about. Once Paul grasped the truth, we see a shift in his heart and a perspective on suffering where he initially pleaded with God multiple times to take this away until he finally reaches a point in his ministry where he says that he is glad about the weakness that he has to endure. He actually puts it like this and says, for the sake of Christ, then I'm content with the weakness in, 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 I'm content with the insults. I'm content with the hardship and the persecutions and the calamities. For when I am weak, then I become strong. Paul could have found contentment in his strength. In Philippians chapter 3, Paul outlines a lengthy list of his accomplishments. Not to brag about them, but to say that he considers them nothing compared to knowing who Christ is. 
He says, but whatever gain I had count a loss for the sake of Christ. Paul would rather be weakened by, by this thorn so that he may have the power of Christ rest upon him. All Paul wanted was Jesus. And if weakness was the key to God's power being made manifest in his life, then he would gladly walk that path. We have the same resolve when we look at our weakness as the key to God's power or our stumbling block to our own plans. Our, are we willing to give up our strength, our accolades, and praise, amen, of a man because we truly believe that Christ is greater? Will we see God's grace in everything that we go through? Will we see his strength, hallelujah, in every suffering that, was, that, that, that we go through? The book of 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 7 reminds us, For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks upon the heart of every man. It is essential that we ask ourselves, am I more focused on my to-do list, my vision board, or goals than being a, a person that God wants me to be? Do we see God as a hindrance to our purpose or the only way to our purpose. Because of the flesh, uh, the flesh does not like God's way of doing things. It does not matter who we are or what we say or what we do. The Bible tells us like this. Jesus tells us whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake, they will find it. God uses our weakness to help us lose ourselves so that we might find him and experience his grace and power. One of my favorite singers sings a song and the words of it goes like this. She says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. But sometimes I wonder what he can do through me. No great success do I have to show no glory of my own, yet in my weakness, he is there to let me know that his strength is perfect when our strength is gone. And he'll carry us when we can't carry on. Raised in his power, the weak become strong. His strength is perfect when our strength is gone. We can only know the power that he holds when we truly see how deep our weakness goes. His strength in us begins where our, where our strength ends. He hears our humble cry and he proves again and again that his strength is continually perfect when our strength is gone. He'll always carry us when we cannot carry on. We're raised in his power. The weak men, the weak women become strong. Will you find your strength in the Lord today? Will you find a hope in our Lord and Savior today, knowing and resting assured that there is ultimately a hope that we can lie on. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood, our righteousness. Will you stand to your feet? I'm going to pray and we'll invite the funeral home to come in a short while. Amen. But I would like for you to take heart to know that in such a time like this, you can still be strong. The Bible says you can go ahead and mourn, but gather your strength. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy does come in the morning. Heavenly Father God, right now we thank you for, for your strength that you have given unto us. Be our peace, Father. Be our way maker. Be, the, be our possibilities even now. You are the God of every impossible situation. We thank you, God, because you are the helper. You, you are our strength. Lord God, right now, for those that are watching, for those that are here, I pray, God, for the peace that passes all understanding. When we should be uh, crying, Lord God, we have something to laugh about. Oh, God, whatever the, the enemy designed for evil, God, I pray that you turn the tables for the good. Comfort the weary, Lord God. Strengthen those that are weak. Help us, Lord God, to endure in such a time like this. Give us power, Lord God. Amen. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your words of truth. Even now, strengthen mother and father. Hallelujah. The brothers, amen. The sons, the family, the fiance. God, I thank you right now for your strength in the family. In the precious name that is above every other name, let the church say amen one more time. 
Amen. The funeral home is coming. You may be seated as they come and take the rest of the service. Thank you for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, this does include the funeral service for Chandy Richardson, and on behalf of the family, I want to thank you all for coming and showing your support. Especially those joining us on live stream, your support is duly appreciated. We will be making our way to Glenview Memorial Gardens, and we'll be in section Trinity of the cemetery. We'll be making a right onto Derry, a right onto Airport, a right onto Steeles, and making a left-hand turn onto Highway 50. Those traveling in procession, please ensure that your four-way flashers are on and you're following all rules and regulations of the road as we're not under police escort. Please note only 10 individuals are permitted at the cemetery as we want to be in good standing with the regulations that the government has set for us. Please note those traveling ahead at being at the cemetery, please do not block the grave for the funeral fleet to arrive. As we exit, we'll be led out by pastor, followed by the casket, and family and friends following him behind. I will ask Paul Bearers to meet us at the main doors outside to assist. And on behalf of myself, Cassandra Gachard, and the New Haven team, we thank you for allowing us to serve you. At this time, please rise. <laughs> 